Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Magnolia Day and today we are returning to rebuilding Brindleton Bay. Uh, so for the past month or so, I had to actually take a bit of a hiatus from The Sims. I was moving across the country and just didn't have the time or really the, actually the energy. I had some time at night, but ugh, at night I was just exhausted. So to get back into it, I decided to, you know, really stick to my comfort zone and build something that, you know, is my favorite thing to build and that I enjoy doing and is relatively easy for me. So this plan, this build is basically 100% landscaping. Um, but I'm so, so excited to share this build with you guys because I was able to get this build to download properly with all the landscaping items, staying raised, on the hills and oh, I'm so excited. Um, so how to do this. Um, the way in which you just actually saw me uh, put down those uh, fences was is not actually entirely correct. So when I was uh, testing this at the very end, uh, some items did still drop. Um, so I had to adjust it and I did that off camera. So I'll kind of go over that now with you if you're maybe interested because, well, I already had a couple of people on uh, Tumblr ask me, so I think there's some of you out there who will be interested. But, so do construct a broom, either uh, using the room tool or I'm not sure what it's called, the free room tool, you know, the one where uh, you can kind of draw out an irregular shape in one go rather than drawing like individual walls. Um, that one I think works the best because you can really follow the shape of the hills and the pond if you're, you know, locating them next to a pond or whatever. Um, you can get a more precise action in one go. And then you're going to replace these walls. Um, I found, or yeah, so you have to uh, make the game recognize it as a room first and that's extremely important. Um, because the way in which, um, to my understanding at least, I mean, don't quote me on any of this. I'm not, you know, one of the developers and I don't know exactly how the game works. Um, but to my understanding, items only stay raised, um, well, obviously you have to have uh, move objects on, but they only stay raised if they're in a room. Um, so basically replace those walls with fences. Um, I use the get to work. Uh, I think they're called like the window shopping fence um, because obviously it's like the one that has the lowest profile um, so it's the easiest to mask the like little bits that will be clipping shoot through because you will have to have at least um, one little corner that's not covered up by the hills you know the roofs um, because otherwise the game doesn't let uh, doesn't let you build uh, roofs inside of rooms. You have to have at least a tiny bit peeking out. Um, but yeah, so I would recommend using that fence, but obviously you, know, you do. Um, and so then you'll demolish the ceiling. And this is the part where um, in the recording that I messed up, at least I'm pretty sure um, this is why it didn't place properly at first. Um, do not demolish the floor. Um, instead paint that with the same green that uh, you use on the hills um, and that should blend in pretty well especially once you put a bunch of landscaping items everywhere and you'll be covering up those little bits of fences anyways so it should look pretty good. Um, if you still find it a little too visible I'd recommend using um, I'm not sure what they're called. They're the items in both um, Get Together and Jungle Adventure. They're the like um, algae looking uh, stuff, scum that you kind of put on water. Um, so I'd recommend using those because they're, you know, there's no gaps in them like any of the other uh, landscaping items. They're basically just a flat texture or flat mesh that's been textured. 
Um, so use those um, if you want to uh, cover anything up. So yeah, the reason why I had initially thought I had to demolish the floors is because my ceilings weren't demolishing properly, or at least that's how it appeared. Basically, though, to get them to demolish properly, I just had to go and use the fence tool somewhere else. Like I had to just draw a single line of fence. I'm not sure if this is just a bug that I've been having. My game has been a little buggy since I've gotten back into playing. Um, I'm not sure. Well, I, I mean, I missed two patches. or Well, I missed a patch and then I came back just with the most recent Caribbean patch. Um, so I'm not sure if this is something caused by that. I don't have any CC in my game, so I'm not, I don't know what's going on. Um, luckily I was able to get it fixed enough to get this lot to save and to play test it and all that good stuff. Um, so I'll have no problem sharing it with you all. Um, but yeah, so I guess if just to talk a little bit more about how to make these hills, um, so I did this one totally CC free. Um, I haven't put my CC back in my game since going on my hiatus. Uh, so I don't know if I'm about that life now, but it's certainly makes life easier, but also not easier. Like, uh, you can kind of see on the screen now. No, okay. Not anymore. But like, I, uh, I was itching to have some of the like Brindleton Bay specific assets that I don't know why the Sims team just doesn't give them to us. They should. Like those that grass, that kind of yellowy grass in the background. That would have made this blend in a lot better, I think, with the surroundings. But I chose I wanted to do this CC free. I wanted, you know, as many most people or as many people as possible to have um access to it without having to download CC. Um so yeah. But so the method that I found best for constructing these, and again, I didn't like totally follow it at the beginning because I was kind of still getting back into the hang of things, um, but basically cover them totally with the grass. Um, I forget what the two grasses are called. They're the second and third item in the catalog, though. Um, I think one's like wild grass and the other's like clump of grass or something like that keeps popping up and then going away too fast on the screen. Um, and just cover the hills in these using the nine key, raising them up, positioning them. Um, I found um, switching the lighting, uh, you know, so having midday lighting, morning lighting, evening lighting kind of helped me get a better uh, view of like where I was missing spots. And then I went back in because I wanted this to kind of be a very florally place. I used a lot of the oopsie daisy, uh, which is probably one of my favorite items in the game. Um, it just has a very, I don't know, I, I love wildflowers in general. I mean, this, this whole lot can kind of just be an ode to wildflowers in general. Um, is I end up going back in with some other flowers, whereas at first I kind of just used the daisies. Um, yeah, so I'm just disguising the edges of the pond more. Um, I didn't talk about this, um, but one of the reasons I really like making ponds like this um, is because if you get the circular roofs close enough to the water, you can't get them like completely close because hills have, or not hills, well, what I'm making be hills, but roofs have to be built on an even base. Um, so you kind of can only get them partially close to the water's edge. Um, but if you then pull the eaves all the way down, that kind of goes into the water and gives it a really, helps make a really natural looking effect. Um, especially then you kind of like, yeah, it just, it gives it a more curved look. Whereas, you know, obviously using, I use the pond tool you could use because again, then those eaves go all the way to the bottom. Um, but you can obviously, you can use the, um, Pools, pools, those are what those are called. Um, uh, so you can use those too, but just the eaves won't obviously go all the way down to the bottom because they probably only go maybe, I don't know, a third of the way down. 
And then also it just makes uh, disguising the edges easier too by using the uh, fountain tool. I think they call that the palm tool and it's not the palm tool, it is the fountain tool. It would be lovely if we could get something like a palm tool, but mm, I don't know if that'll ever happen. We would have to have, <sighs> there, there would have to be different game mechanics, I think, in place for there to be something like that. Um, but in any case, using that makes, um, I think, building ponds easier uh, because you can place the landscaping items on the bottom of it and they kind of peek up a little bit so you get variation in height. Um, and then you can get even more variation in height by you know using the scale down tool and in combination with the move up tool. And you can just get some really good kind of gradation down into the bottom of it. And I think it helps it look very natural. Um, then obviously also using like rocks and stuff, um, rocks, the algae text, algae objects. I, I should go check out what those are actually called. I think they're supposed to be algae though. Um, using those um, and a few other items. I'm sorry also if you can hear the construction going on. The building next to me is doing construction and this is like the only time that I've had to record this voiceover that my roommates are not around and I don't want to bother them or I don't know, I feel a little self-conscious recording voiceovers when other people are around because I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, I'm only about halfway through this and I don't know what more to talk about. I always forget how hard it is to record a voiceover. Um, yeah, what else? Um, but yeah, so we're back to, uh, doing, uh, rebuilding Brindleton Bay. Um, I bet you all thought I abandon that considering it's been two months since I worked on it and honestly part of me had kind of considered like I just I couldn't get a clear vision in my head of what I wanted to do like there were a couple lots that I knew what I wanted to do and then I started working on them and it just like wasn't quite going to plan um but so far, I think this fits in really nice. I think it goes well with the other house that I did in, uh, what is that called? Cavalier Cove? Cav bleh. Cavalier Cove. Um, so, yeah. So I ended up, I wasn't entirely sure like what this pond was for when I started building it. Um, so part of the inspiration also did come from, so I'm in Boston now, and there's a lot of parks built by, um, God, what is his first name? Frederick Olmsted, I think. Um, he's just an amazing landscape architect who uh, works or worked, he's long since passed, um, in a very natural style, um, you know, getting these places to look like they kind of just existed. Um, so I visited um, one of those over the weekend. It was a really lovely day. Walked around that. So this is very much inspired by Jamaica Pond in Boston. Um, and just kind of the meandering um, path around the pond, the overgrown nature, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and I I only got to it in like the very last bit of this video because again, like I said in the very beginning, um, this build is like nearly 100% landscaping. Um, I think there's maybe like two minutes of building um, and then it's just, it'll just be kind of like this little shelter, like kind of almost like a rain shelter, a little pavilion um, and then a few picnic tables and some grilling equipment. Um, but anyways, I completely went off on a tangent there. Um, I end up envisioning this as um, being kind of a memorial park. Um, and so I was reading through some of the catalog descriptions because I kind of I wanted to try and make it fit in with the Sims lore a bit. Um, and so I hadn't really done that. I hadn't read through the catalog items uh, from Cats and Dogs. And I guess uh, it's the St. Bernard, which of course, like typical Sims, like 
using a dog name, but it's the name of a ship, um, obviously also a dog, um, that crashed on the island, um, you know, so many, many years ago. Um, I am having this in my description of this, that it was built on the centennial of the tragedy of the St. Bernard, and it's in commemoration to the victims and, you know, the whole ordeal there. Um, so I don't know, I was, I was really happy with that and made me, once I kind of got that in my mind, um, it made me really, uh, how do I say this, reinvigorated for this project. Um, and I kind of, I want to have there be more of a, I guess a lore um, to the whole project, you know, have there be a little bit of a history behind each of the builds, which, you know, I didn't do for my first build, that was just a house. Um, but, you know, I kind of want there to be a little bit of a history to all of them. Um, and hopefully that'll keep me going, uh, you know, get me through just purely, you know, when you're just doing something purely for the aesthetics, I feel like it's easy to lose your momentum. Um, though, I mean, I've obviously, that's often my main reason for doing it, but well, no, not really. I mean, what got me really into The Sims, like it's, it's just been about a year since I started playing The Sims now, um, or a year since I part started playing it like full on. Um, but it was really developing kind of a story, and then that helped me uh, have a reason for building. You know, I was building a character's house rather than just building, um, whereas I couldn't really get into it before then. Um, so whenever you have kind of a story in mind, I feel like it's just easier to build. Um, or even just a family in mind, you know, I, I hear a lot of YouTubers talk about that, but I've never really been um, necessarily into the whole family thing. So like thinking of, I don't know, that that has never very worked very well for me. But I, I think this, this kind of method hopefully will do so. Um, and I'm excited. Um, so do you have any thoughts on lore or um history maybe i don't know i'd like to come up with some other big events or even some like specific past historical characters to have in this uh rebuilding project that i think would be fun because initially i was thinking of trying to find like a specific character like you know in the portraits and paintings that came with um cats and dogs there's like a portrait of a woman with like um a scuba diving helmet and she's like in a super fancy dress I think and I was hoping there would be a name for her in the catalog description that's why I initially started looking through that but there wasn't um so I went with the tragedy of the Saint Bernard because that was you know in quite a few of the descriptions and it just kind of it made sense I didn't want to come up with too much of my own uh uh Oh God, I keep using the word lore, and I think that's because I'm listening to that podcast right now. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so I, I would like to though come up with some characters like that for this project. Maybe even make them and create a sim. I don't know if I do that on this, you know, record myself making them because I'm not very good at create a sim. I don't have it's it's weird. I can spend uh, this build. I think took me like four or five hours, like I can spend four or five hours basically just placing landscaping items. But give, if I start taking over even like 15 minutes and create a sim, I get so frustrated. Um, I don't know, it's it's bizarre to me, um, but that's the way it is. Um, I always find I have to like spend short amount of time and then leave and then come back and then leave and come back so it's a very I don't know, arduous process um anyways to talk about what's on the screen here I'm finally adding more flowers other than just the uh daisies the 
Um, of course, the romantic garden flowers are always a must-have for me, the irises especially. They're just so nice and small that they can fit in really well in a lot of places, and they come in a lot of nice colors. Initially, I was kind of upset that they, they weren't in white because my initial thinkings were, you know, kind of keeping this relatively monotone, just greens and whites. Um, as again, like that's my comfort zone and getting back into building, I felt safe to stay in my comfort zone. But I actually really like the little dots of pink uh, that those flowers brought throughout this build. And then I used just a small bit of the, um, they're called like the Pleasant Purple Flowers from, oh my god, I'm forgetting the name of that pack, Outdoor Retreat. Those ones right there that I just placed. Um, so just a few of those, and it just felt very, mm, I don't know, the whole thing to me, and maybe this is like patting myself on the back too much, but it ends up having a very impressionistic feel to it. Uh, which I was really happy with. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm really running out of things to say. Oh, here we go. We're finally quote unquote building. Um, so this is that little pavilion. Um, kind of tried to keep it in keeping with like a turn of the century type architecture that a pavilion might be built with. Um, I wish I could have raised up this portion, but I wasn't sure if that would work with, or I was like 99% sure that that wouldn't work with the way that I had to have the rooms under the pills. Um, so it's not raised. Hopefully someday there will, you guys see that you can see me trying to test that out and very quickly giving up. Um, hopefully someday there will be a patch that like allows us to uh have foundation on just like certain rooms or even just like because you know you can save like uh, or you can move a house so you can move a collection of rooms so it should be that you can apply conditions i would think in some way to that object via the game code like i would i would hope maybe someday that will be an addition and I think that that would make for such much more amazing builds. Um, it would have the tiered landscaping of my dreams. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we have this little pavilion kind of in very natural feel using those new pillars from Seasons. Like this is my first time really using some of the Seasons stuff. I feel a bit silly. Um, but I really do like those pillars and the spandrels that match them. Um, I'm not sure if I showed me placing down the spandrels. And then I think I did this off camera too when I was testing this, but I uh, kind of covered the ceiling with uh, shelves. And we're just about to the end here. Um, so if you download this lot, um, links, uh, you know, all the information to do so will be in the description down below. Um, but just very, very much so. Make sure to place it with baby.move objects on. And I'm not sure, again, if this is something that's just like my own game being buggy, um, but I would suggest placing it in um, free build mode, not like not switching into build mode with like your sim being playable, because that for me, um, the previous lot and this one just kept merging weirdly when I was trying to do that. So again, not sure if that's, that's most likely just on my end, my game being weird and needing to be fixed. Um, but if you're having issues, I would say do that. And yeah, um, I think we're just doing a few more finishing touches around here. Um, we're going to add at least one more activity. I, was, I think I haven't done it unless I completely uh, spaced out there and didn't see myself do it. But we're going to add a little bit of a fishing uh, hole here. I'm not, I didn't test this out, and so I will do so beforehand and make a note of it in the description that if you need to move any objects for that to be playable. Um, but yeah. Oops, sorry, that was my phone there if you heard that. Um, 
Yeah, oh, and we create a little bit of kind of a privacy fence from the actual square itself here. It just felt like it needed to be a little bit blocked off. Like, I mean, it's definitely not fully blocked off. That hedge doesn't go even all the way, but yeah, I think that gives it a nice, it finishes it off well. Um, and just a few final touches. So thank you so much for watching to this stage. If you did, um, there'll be a few uh, fly throughs and shots of the build in live mode. And um, yeah, I would love it if you could do all of the typical YouTube stuff, like and subscribe. Um, there'll be a detailed post in my Tumblr, and this will be up for download on the gallery. So thank you.